Okay, so we will add some kind of uh, uh, design on the top of it. Uh, still, we will just work on this. Some kind of floral design you want on the edge of the book. We will just start adding inside this. So first, let's find some kind of floral. And we'll create a different maps. <coughs> so uh, we'll create a circular map um, and uh, roughness map for all this. Okay. We just created only the normal map yesterday. And we'll just start creating a different maps for that. So you just add it to normal map. Suppose if you feel that you want to flip it, we can also flip that map also. So now it is this part is coming out and this is going inside. So if I just click on this flip. So this is what we get. So this part has to come out and this is all you can see the clear effect. Okay. So sometimes we might see that uh, problem over there. We have this. And let's add some kind of uh, floral uh, kind of design to this. So you can just have some kind of reference. Suppose I will click this one. Okay, so go to Photoshop and let's open that image. Go to file, open. And we have some of this design already. So I just want to add this on the top. Okay, so select color range and I'll just select this part. Press OK. And right click, select inverse, copy that. Control C. And I can just paste it in this layer. So control C. Okay, so we have some of this uh, selection of that over here. So if you want to adjust that, just control C. Let's fix that over here. Okay, so I just select again control. And we just want to fill with some new uh, color over there. So just Start adding the new color on the top. So create a new layer again. Let's fill that with some color. A uh, little bit of this gold kind of text if you want. Okay. So once I add that uh, over here, so you can just see that, check it how does it look. So I just want to put it inside this, not on the total corner. Enter. And now we just want to give <coughs> some kind of uh, details of bevel and number. Okay. So go to layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. So when I do that, you will see this kind of emboss effect which will come on the top of this over here. And you can change it. So what kind of emboss effect you want for this? So inner. So if you want this to be like this, so we have inner emboss which you can adjust that over here. And I can also change this. So once I uh, click on this different glass counter, uh, you'll see a different effect over here. So I just start seeing that. So I like this one, press OK. Okay, so this design what I want to just put below the text layer. And this uh, also I just need to adjust this uh, position of that one. So what I have this center design is there, auto select. Click on this and we need to see which is that design. Let's see this one. Okay, so I just want to fix that properly. Click on this. I just want to place it here, control C. Just scale it down. And this text also, I'll just reduce the size of it. So go to the text layer, control T, and just scale it down. So 
Okay, so now this is looking to new and this is looking to old. So we need to add some kind of blending between this uh, layer also. Okay, so all the dust and everything should come on the top of that. So bring that layer down. So we need to find this layer. So auto select, so click on this, click on this. And name that. Okay, floral, floral design. And let's bring this down. So where that dust is there. So I just want to bring it still down. So even the dust will come on the top of that as well. So just start bringing it down there. So it blends nicely uh, when I start bringing that down over here. So here. This is too much. So let's bring this up. Okay. So now we already have that all this uh, things on. Okay, so still it looks more saturated. So I need to reduce the saturation of this. So this image adjustment view saturation and reduce the saturation amount for that. So I can just make it look like this. Can we make it dull? It should be there, but it should not be that much visible. So just start increasing. Okay. So I'm just adding this uh, some kind of design on the top of it, control S. So let's check that out here. Book. And it's still it is saving. Once it saves, then only it will update all this. Once it saves, then we just check that we have updated that design. Okay, so what are the position of this? I just want to move it little inside because this edge which is coming out. So you need to see the UVs inside Photoshop where the UVs are there. So I will just click on the UV and then, and then you can see that where it is going. So now it is easy for us to adjust uh, the design according to that floral. So control T. I just want to bring it here. So I don't want this. This also can be down a little bit. And this also can be so. This is the line outline for the book, and I think this is too much. So press enter. Now, now switch off the UVs, control S, and let's save this and just check that out. So it takes time for saving that and once you save that, let's check this. Okay. okay, so this again we need to adjust, check it in proper center. And let's select that design. So so many layers, so if you don't give the name, not different. So this is what this layer is, so let us center that design. And make it in the proper center this one. So auto select will switch off, make it properly center. Even the text. Okay, so when I save that again, we have to just check it out here. So this is what we have now. So we have this text and everything. Now, uh, if you see that some of the design needs to be glowing inside this, so we'll create a different map now. So we have done this, and backside also, if you want some kind of design to be added, you can just add. And I need to create the normal map also from this because uh, whenever you are creating these shapes also, even this shape should have some kind of normal map created. Okay. So now go to Photoshop again. So I'm going to do file, save as or export. So I'll just export as albedo. So we have already we have from this we'll create a normal map. So open albedo. Now go to 3D or uh, filter. Uh, here we have something called normal map. Generate normal map. Click on that. 
So once I add the normal maps now, it will give this detailed information also for me. So if I just want to see that. Now I am seeing this floral information also on the top of it. So that is also will have. So if you want to increase the scale, I can increase more of the cell so I can see it more properly this uh, crop. And then you press OK. So I can see more detail inside this normal map. Okay, so now save that, go to file, export. Can you select the uh, Selectively means it should be separate separate layers. So if it is separate separate layers, you can have everything separate separate normal maps and then you can blend it. So I can use this as a separate normal map and then I can blend it. Okay, so I'll just save now. So save it. And then go over here and then reload that one. So now I see this uh, depth information also over here. So it is, if you just switch it off and keep it on. Okay, so if you want to blur that, uh, some of the details, you can also blur it. Now it is having too much detail over here. Uh, so inside this normal map only. So before creating, when you go to file, enter. 3D generate normal map. Suppose if you want a little bit of blurness inside the map, you can add the blur only. So we have this blur option. So I just want this detail scheme. A little bit of blur I can add. So you see this. Okay. So if I just press OK, now you get this kind of normal map, which is blur kind of thing. So if you want like that, so go to file, export as PNG. And let's name it as normal blood. I don't know why it's a blood. And then you just try and reloading that also. This is little bit of blood. So once I blur that, you can just see that. So it will have little bit of blurness uh, on the top of it. So if you have very sharp detail of the normal map. So you can just load that, click it, and we have this. And this has a nice detail of it. Okay. Now we are done with this uh, uh, thing here also. You can just see the detail of that, how, it, how much detail it is coming over here. So if I just change that to this one. Okay. So I, I feel that that was a little less I can use it. So go to Photoshop. Filter, 3D, normal map. I don't need any kind of blur inside this, so make it zero. And this, if I can just reduce it to 80 or something, press OK. Now we have this. So this looks proper, so go to file, export, export as PNG. You just load that one. Okay, so we have this now. So how much we want to add it here? Okay, so now let's add some kind of different maps. So uh, once you have created this maps now, so we want to add some kind of. So this everything is our base map. So select everything, click one folder, and name it as base or Alberto. So it can be called as Alberto. Map. Now duplicate this control Z and you need to create a roughness map. So name it as roughness. Roughness map. Okay, so I'll just create uh, for the roughness map. What I have to do is I'll just create a adjustment layer, make it black and white. Now depending on this, uh, it will give me the roughness. Okay, so wherever this white region is there, okay, so there will be no reflection, wherever the black is there, there will be reflections or it will be invert also. So you need to check that how it works. So I have just added this and if I go to this level, so go to the levels, if you want to make it more strong, more black, it won't be visible, more white, it will be visible. 
So if you want this to be uh, very shiny or very reflective, we can also use that. So let me show that. Let's make it like this. Just go and try. And if I just save that as a roughness map, so go to this file, export, export as, and name it as roughness. Okay, so book roughness I have loaded now, and I just use this map over here. So we have this glass map or circular map, you can use it. Or I'll just use this inside this, and here we have a roughness map. Suppose if I just add new map, let us load it over here. This is our normal map. So normal map will give all the details on the low poly object. Okay. So understand each and every different maps, what we have and what does it does. Albedo map will give only the color information for us. So this is, this is what it gives the color information for me, the albedo. Now we have this roughness map. So now, everywhere you can see this nice specular highlights which is coming. So for that purpose, we have to use this uh, map called roughness. So if I click on this roughness, and if I just add that over here, so we have this book roughness. Do you see this? So which place you have not seen the roughness now? So in this place and all, you won't see that much uh, specularity. So if I just reduce the roughness, Okay, so if I just click on this invert and increase this roughness, now we can see. Now this is what we get when I adjust that a bit. Okay, so we don't want that much reflectiveness, so we can just adjust this roughness value over here. So if I increase, so when I invert that, this is what we have. So I decrease this. So depending on this map, it is what it is taking right now, the roughness. Okay. So if I go to the Photoshop now, uh, now if I just switch it off, and if I just use that as a roughness, let's go to the level, and this time just want to make like this. And go to file, export, export as PNG. So it takes, depending on the black and white map what we have, uh, use this as a roughness. And let's set that over here. Now this is, now what, depending on the map, now here you can see there is no roughness, uh, there is no uh, specularity or something like that, and here we can see, wherever the leather part is there, it is giving this nice specularity for us, and whatever this part is there, uh, we are not seeing any kind of specular highlight, this is also not showing any kind of specular highlight towards this. Yes. So if it, this object is something like metallic, so what we can do is we can just have uh, that uh, specularity. So what I can do is like this, a Photoshop. So this color, uh, whatever this color is there, I can just change it. So let's go for that layer. Mm, this is just floral design. So this is that. Okay, I'll just click on this, hide this layer. Uh, let's make it totally black. Let's see this how this will look now. Okay, so I just selected the floral floral layer and I'll just export export as PNG and this book roughness see and then we just check it over here inside this. Okay. So what is happening over here, you can just see that this is having nice uh, specular value on the top of it, uh, depending on the roughness. So what it is doing is, whatever is the black part is there, that it is giving more uh, specularity. Whatever is the white part is there, that is removing the specularity from this. Okay, we can also invert the map over here. So there is option for invert. So if I just click on that, it will invert that. Okay, so black becomes white, white becomes black. So now you will see a reverse uh, thing over here. So what else should be shiny? Now this becomes shiny and this becomes 
totally uh, without Chinese. But we want like this. We want the leather to be Chinese. And this I want to be looking like old. So we got this also. And we can also have one more mark for metallic map. So suppose if it, this is something like gold kind of thing, uh, which is embossed on the top of it. Or some kind of uh, metal part is what we have. Uh, suppose this is made up of some kind of metallic part. So we can also create one more map for metalness. We have one more map over here for metalness. So if I just show you that. So we have done this specular. Let's duplicate this again. Control J. And name this as a metalness. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just go over here and if I just can do the invert of that. So open this and let's add over here called invert. So what will happen with this map? So if I just go to file export, export as PNG and I just name it as metalless. Let's name it as metalless. And if I just load that map over here uh, inside this metalless map, let's see this. Let's load that. Metalless. So you can see this now. This becomes like more gold metallic texture. If I adjust this metalless, if I increase this metalless, you see that. Okay? So it will give that more metallic feel for that uh, whatever the object is. So you can just see this now. Okay, so inside this metalless map, uh, which if it is totally white over here, uh, suppose I don't want for any other objects over here. So what you can do is you can just change that. Uh, every other thing will be totally black. So let's use that floral design. Only uh, you can just make this everything is over here, and whatever the floral design is there. So I just want to put the above everything. Let's use this. Let's use floral design. So this is the text, and we have this roughness. I don't want to open that. Roughness. So here we have this uh, design This one. So I just duplicated that and I did not rename it. So I can just add Since I applied the reverse on the back side, what I'll do is I'll just create a new layer and pick this white color. So when I fill with white color, what will happen? Since the invert is applied on the top, it will give me this effect over here. And this also, I don't want this to be like metallic. So there will be no metallic feel on this book. So select everything. This part also. Create a new layer with white color uh, on the top so let's select this and let's make it on the top control D. and if i just save this now so export export as and let's save it as uh, metalless right so this is what we have this metalless map and if i just check inside this now you see all these back will be having that metallic or uh, reflective feel for that, but everywhere it will be not having that. So I'm just trying to give only for this uh, that kind of feel for it. Okay, so how much you want that metalless? You can reduce it. So if you feel that it is too much, you can reduce that over here. Values here. Okay, or inside Photoshop, what you can do is you can control this amount of white over here. So if it is some grey color, you will not have that much uh, metallic values. So if I just go for this control and click and change it to a little bit of grey color. Let's go for grey. Okay. 
to this. So a little bit of lighter responses to that control D. And suppose this is what we have now. Okay? So export. Export as PNG. Let's export that again as a roughness, not roughness, metal. And if I just check over here. Okay, so I have added that now it will be fine. You can just see that how much you want this metalness you can increase and we have this good enough. Okay, so roughness also uh, you can see that. So how much that map should affect the scene? That much I am giving you. So if you still feel that this is too much, uh, the level of this, you can go into the Photoshop. Now metalness we have and I can just use this roughness. So open this roughness option. And here we have levels, so increase this to more. Like this, and if I just go to file, export, export as, I think there is one more layer which I have created on the top. So this is too much exposure, so we are losing, losing some of the details on the top of that face. Okay, suppose this part you don't want the levels to affect, you can select all this part and you can mask that out. All ten is all. So it will not affect that uh, layer, whatever the selection is there, or just fill with black color, uh, it won't affect that part. The levels is not going to affect on this group. So if I just go to file export, SPNG. And this is a roughness. Okay. And let's save it. So this is what the roughness map which you have added on it. Okay, so now you want uh, like this we have created different maps now. So we have created normal to roughness, metalness, and here also now you can just select it has updated now that map and it is having a little bit of less specularity uh, because I have adjusted the map inside. Okay, so go to the levels again, increase it more, and if I just show you that how it will update that on your export, and if I just go for this roughness, you see that whole thing how it affects. This is now get it. Now it is very less. Uh, so the more brighter map I am creating as a roughness map. So it is affecting that specularity of that map over here. Good. And uh, this text. So now for this particular layer, I feel that this is too much. Uh, so if I just click on this auto select, click on this layer, uh, which is the floral design. So I just don't want this much specularity for that. So let's fix that. Here. So it is about this floral design. This is the layer. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, make it little bit of more green. Fill that. Do that. So click the new layer. And fill it. Little dark. This is what we want. So let's save this. And let's add it. Now I can just save this. Okay, so this part again it is too much shiny and now we don't want this part to be so much uh, shiny over here, so we can just come back to this map. Okay, so this map, if I just try to uh, remove that mask over here, so let's select this levels. Okay, so if I just select everything and fill with some white color. And again, you just save it. So go to file export, export as PNG. 
And every time we just make it roughness map, so uh, I'm just exporting. So export as PNG, so file export, export as PNG. Do this, yes. Now there will be no specularity on the book. So, so book becomes totally flat, the papers become totally flat or so you don't see any kind of specularity on the paper. But when I see this, so now it will be. Okay. okay, so we're getting this nice uh, specularity where the ledger part is there and wherever there is some kind of with tiered part of it, there will be no specularity. Okay, so this is what we have. So, one more map I'll create over here is uh, something called emission map. So, emission map will add some kind of glow for that region. Suppose if it is a magical book. And you want some kind of light on the top of that book. So at that time, you will be adding that uh, map for that. Suppose for this floral design, only you want some kind of thing glowing. So what you can do is you can create a map for that also. So I just create inside Photoshop, and that will be called as emission map. Okay, so we have separate separate maps you can just see. So inside this, we have something called floral design. So I'll just copy the same floral design and so you see. And create a new folder called emission map. Emission map. Okay, so inside this, so just paste that. So I will just want to paste that inside this emission map. Okay, so just make it so that is what this design is there now. Okay, okay so you can just take my V. Let's give it some color. Okay, so it is not coming in the same place. So let's try and bring this floral design in the same proper place. So for this floral design, let's try bringing it here. Okay, so this should be totally white. So fill with that totally white. So whichever the color you want the blue. Suppose if you want this kind of glow on the top of it, so fill with that. Okay, so this you don't want, just delete that part. Okay, so if I just save this as an emission map, so go to file. I need to check that whether it is matching with this file also or not. So let's see. This is not matching, let's adjust the design, floral design properly. Yeah. So this is the proper place and it should match both the things. So we have this emission map and this. So switch on this. And it should be like this black and white. So switch on this and go to file, export, export as PNG and name it as emission. So everything is, we have a lot of different maps now. Now let's check that out here. So we have something called emission map, click on this emission. Uh, on the operation, emission, MSA. And let's load that map over here. So go to this, and we have this emission map. And we can increase the intensity of that. So if you want to adjust the glow or something, you can just see that. So it will emit, emit the light from itself. That's what this emission map will do. So if I just want something like this, something which is glowing, you can add. Okay, so that's what this emission map will do. So it will try to glow that also. Okay, so now if I just go to the render settings or main camera, and here we have a lot of different uh, properties of this. Suppose if I increase this zoom, so it will add that glow to the scene. So that bloom option will do that. So if I increase that bloom, uh, we also have over here, so this is for flare. Uh, so if you have increased the flare amount, threshold of that, and if I just increase this bloom now, just try to increase that bloom. So for post effect, we have this blue. 
So we we get this layer also in that top of it. So this is having nice glow effect. So how much you want? This is going to be controlled by this. So if you want a little bit of blue more there. So And this is the flare, even you can see some kind of flare which is coming on the top of it. That is because of this lens flare. So if you increase the size, size of this now. And if I increase the size of that, so this. So there is some kind of lens flare which is happening over here. So that's what the lens flare will do. And whatever the emission is there. Uh, it is coming from that. You can just see this now. How this uh, flare effect which is coming from this text. So if I try to move this, or if I do like this, if it is correctly focusing towards the camera, you will see that flare. So that is the flare strength. How much you want? Size of that. So if I increase the size, it will blur. And now you will see. And we have this threshold. So in this we can have this. How much it should be visible, or how much it should cut off. Okay. Okay. So we have all these uh, different layers, and you can control this emission map if you want to control it. So if you want it to glow slowly, uh, we can also glow it. And we also have different color for that. So if you if you don't want this as a map. Uh, you want to use some kind of color there. So you can choose some kind of color and increase the intensity. So it's just a mission. Okay, so it will add that glow for this now. So using this, suppose if you like, so it is trying to blend between two colors and try to give this different result. Okay, so if you create an emission map over here with, uh, without any color, uh, then you can change it. So if I just go to image adjustment saturation, make this totally white like this, and then you export that emission. Okay. So let's check this now over here. So whatever this color is there now, it will come the same over here. Because uh, previously what we are doing is it was trying to blend between two colors and used to give me that. So if you switch off this color to black, there is no emission, white, this is what you see. Now you blend whichever the color you like. And you can control the color over here using this. Suppose here you want something which is more bright, but this bright over here. Also. Right. Okay, so how much you want this? I don't want any kind of blue there. Fine. Okay, so once this is done, uh, we can render this out from the software. To render this, uh, we have this sky option. So let's change the background. So what I want is, I just want to have a different sky. Uh, if you want to have some kind of sky, you can just have a different sky over here. Blurred sky, or ambient sky, or here I can change the color. So color I want more of this dark. Dark blue. Okay. So if I just hold shift on my keyboard uh, and right click, when I hold shift and I'm just, I am seeing the rotation of the light inside this. So I can just check my model by holding shift and right click uh, to see the HDRI map rotation. Okay. And we can also add extra lights in that into the scene. So right click, add light. So what kind of light you want? So you just want some kind of directional light. So this is one light which I have added. So to move that, you have this move tool. And you have this directional light. So which direction you want this? Suppose this direction you want. And the brightness of this light. The color of the light. What color you want for that? So you can add whatever the lights you want. Okay. So now the flare is looking too much. So we have to go to this main camera. And flare strength is too much. So I will just reduce the flare strength. 
size also so i can just work only on this part of and reduce the brightness of this so very less light so if you want in a different color that's what i did okay again another light go to add light again directional light uh, so which direction you want so this will be on the back side Okay, so you do whatever the lighting you want, which direction the light you want to keep. Suppose this direction you want to see the text more properly. So, there are multiple lights I can add it. So, this is coming from this side, drawn from back side. So, I want to rotate the light. Move that out here. I can keep the uh, angle like this for this and increase the brightness. So how much do you want the light in that direction? Okay, so this light which direction you want, press E, rotate now. Suppose on this side you want some light to the volume, increase the brightness of this. So little more reddish uh, it is there, so you can change it, so whatever the light color you want, you can just make it white, so this is the default color which you have. One more light. So keep adding uh, as many lights you want, so you can just right click again, so here we have different types of lights, so only directional spot. So if it is omni means it will emit from all the direction. So this is the omni light, uh, it can emit from all this direction. So I have this one. So if you want to switch off, you can switch off the light and change. So this light is giving too much emissions. Uh, I just want a fixed light. And to animate that uh, book like a turntable, so I can just keep the book position like this. And here right click, add turntable. I can just add that book into this turntable. Okay, so now if I just go to window and timeline, so it is already added the animation to my book. And we have this. Okay, if you feel that the, uh, there is some kind of light flickering or something which is happening, uh, we can also parent all this light also into the turntable. Everything can go into the turntable, and now you just see even the light will be moving. So you won't see that sudden flicker of the book so now everything is moving with it and we can render this out okay so if you want some kind of camera movement also so you can also do that so already we have this turntable so i just select the camera and here we have this keyframe so switch on that so we can animate this camera also we have this now after one second or two second I just want the camera to go down here to go up so we can move the camera rotation over here so as it is going let's make this up ok so what are the camera movement also if you want you can add it but now let's do it like that I don't want any of the camera movement. Let's do this. So that is fine. Okay. So now to finally render, 
Uh, you can go to this render settings. Uh, here you need to make it use ray tracing. So when I enable that ray tracing, it will be more nice, uh, realistic uh, reflection and all this in this. So to reduce the noise, denoise it. And here we need to enable ambient occlusion to get the soft shadows. You can increase that over here. And let's render that. So go to desktop and where you want to render this. So, so it will be rendering on my desktop and nothing has no other settings. And this is the resolution 1920180 and what format it is. So it is MPEG4. So go to render and all videos. So now we just start rendering that uh, turntable of your book. Depending on how, how much time we don't know how much time to take for this. It's quite fast. Okay, so that's how uh, we can do that whole texture. So there are different textures we need to create. We need to apply uh, different different textures. Uh, metal, roughness. If metallic object are there, use metallic method. Okay, so that's it. So, any doubts in this? Any doubts? Any? Okay, so.